Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are going to unbox and try out this knitting machine. It is the Centro 48 needle machine. I'm also going to be walking you through making your very first project. So we're not just going to unbox it together, we are going to start something together. So all you're going to need is a 50 gram a ball of DK weight yarn and you're going to end up with a sweet little hat and your machine all set up with my tips and tricks for getting it working super easy, super fast, but you'll be walking away with your very first hat. So let's get started. So this is my Centro knitting machine, the 48 needle, number 843, and this is what is inside. So four little balls of yarn in different thicknesses, and this little plastic cover. I like anything that comes with its own tool, so you don't have to go and find your own. That's, that's value added right there. I love that. So it comes with suction cups and little tiny baby screws. And the screwdriver is also magnetized. First thing you have to do is flip your machine over. And we got to put in our legs four legs and also four suction cups. Getting these little suction cups into those grooves all the way in there is hard to do. So what you can do is take a crochet hook, which of course we have, and use your crochet hook to push that in. Like on a tabletop, just push it in slowly and you will be able to get them all the way in. And then pop it into your into the slot, screw, magnetized, and we just screw it right in the center there, just like that. And now repeat that for the other three legs. So now all the legs are suction cupped and screwed on. Also in the bag or in the box comes three different darning needles, super long, medium, and, and normal size, and a little crochet hook if you drop any restitches. We also have to put on our tension guide. It goes from basically small yarn, medium yarn, or thicker yarn. And from my experience, this machine for me works best with a DK weight yarn, a number three weight. So I just use the small eye right there. And that just pops in the fat bump on the bottom and the pushy bit on the top. And you just push it in to these holes, just like that. Now we are ready to start. And now we want to move our teeth around until we see this white peg right here. There's also numbers. This is number 48, but to find it can be a bit tricky. So find where it is. I'm going to mark this tooth before it, just so when it's going around, I can see without struggling. And I'm just going to put my silver marker on it. You could use any marker. You could make it black or whatever. I just want to be able to see that stitch when it's coming around or see that tooth when it's coming around. Also on the side, you can do tube for T or panel for P. I'm going to be showing you how to do a tube to start with. And now get it ready with your feed guide facing you. Start your row counter. And my first sample looks like this. <laughs> yeah. And that's me. I'd like to say I'm pretty good with yarn. My kids were helping me, but it is not their fault. Um, there is drop stitches. It's just like an absolute hot mess. So I'm going to be showing you how to not do this with your very first. I mean, we got the hang of it, but it's an unusable sample. So I'll show you how to do it straight from the get go. So your first project works out. So 50 grams of four ply yarn or a size three worsted weight yarn makes a beanie without uh, folding it up, without a cuff. It's just one beanie that fits on a normal size head. So fold it up. It can be for a newborn, flip it down for an adult or halfway for a kid. It is pretty much one size fit all. So this is the yarn I'm going to be using for my hat, but we're not going to start with this yarn. 
So, and always start from the center so that it's easier to pull for your machine. And grab a contrasting color. So a color that's gonna show up. You're gonna really be able to see the difference of your stitches. And start from the center of the skein as well. So grab your contrasting yarn, or it's called waste yarn, and hook it underneath this first hook. So on your tooth, there's a hook. You want it to be underneath that toothy bit. Move your work forward, and we're gonna go, we went in front of the white tooth. We're gonna go in behind the next, and in front, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind. And you wanna have a little bit of tension just to make sure that that yarn goes into that hooky part of those teeth that are coming up. So just keep going in front and behind slowly all the way around. You don't want to miss anyone. Just like this. And now we are back to our white tooth. So now instead of going around our white tooth, we want to put it right into that yarn feeder and making sure it's starting at that bottom part in the front. We don't want it just through the top bit like that. We want to make sure it is all the way down and through and then into whichever tension guide you're using, but for my yarn, I'm using the small one. So just pop it in like that. You can hold your yarn a little bit. I do just to make sure there's no knots, but I'm not holding it, I'm just feeling for knots and letting it go freely. And now slowly all the way around. And you can hear the machine clunking. It clunks for this round. And now we're on to the second round. So now it's much quieter and much smoother. And now we wanna go around for 10 rows. Doesn't totally matter, anywhere from five to 10 rows. So now let's go until our counter says 10. So that's plenty to get us started. It looks like it's, it's um, knitting very nicely, nice and smooth. So we are ready to work on our good yarn. So working all the way up to our white peg. When our white peg is up, we can cut our yarn and just put it down in the middle, making sure that it goes underneath that tooth of that white peg. And now grab your yarn that you wanna use for your hat. So now we wanna leave a long enough tail to sew everything together. So about 15 inches, you want, quite, you want more than you think. And now straight away, put it through the feed guide and through your tension holder, yarn holder down here, and just holding it along the inside. Just start slowly with your next row, just making sure that that yarn is getting grabbed. There we are. This row I just kind of go a bit slow just to make sure that it's joining nicely. You want to make sure your yarn is coming freely. When it's a new skein or a new ball, you probably want to pull some out in advance just so it doesn't get clunked up or too tight. So now I'm going to crochet up this entire skein, so until it's finished.
almost done your yarn. That's all I have left. I want to start looking for my original, that marker where I marked it, because my little white peg is right after. So I want to get to that spot and then I'm going to be finished. I've done 100 rows with this 50 gram skein. And there is my white peg. I could probably do one more round, but I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna cut my yarn, and I'm gonna go all the way to this first peg. So you're always working around the white peg, and put your tail in the middle, like that and grab your contrasting yarn again, because we're gonna finish the same, whoop. So grab your contrasting yarn again. We're gonna finish the same way we started. So around the tooth, right after the white tooth. You don't have to leave too much of a tail, but make sure it's underneath that hook part. And just giving it a little hold. Now we can thread this one straight in. So make sure it's in the front part of that feeder and down into your tension and just hold it along the inside for a little bit. I'm just watching to make sure it goes underneath all of those teeth. And now we're going to work around for 10 rows, approximately, at least five. So that's my ninth row. So I'm going to keep an eye on my special peg that I marked, just so I know when that white one is coming along. Right there, and we're going to be going around that white, that white peg, always around the white peg. We don't have to leave too much of a tail. We're just going to go like that. So holding this tail into the center, just crank. So we're no yarn in the feeder. You now we can let go, and we're just going to work our way around and get this off of our knitting machine. There, it starts separating. Just like that. And we can move our knitting machine. Mine does not stick onto the surface. It's a bit too textured. And now it looks like this. It looks kind of funny and not that great. But what you do is you give it a nice stretch. And then those knitting stitches just show up. Like that. And then I also use my arm to cheat a little bit. Like that. Because my arm doesn't pull anything by mistake. And the other side. There. So now all of our blue yarn has turned into gorgeous little knitting stitches. So now we're just going to inside it out into a hat. So grab the one side and about halfway through and just kind of poke it together like that and get it evened out on this other side. And I'm doing nothing with our waist yarn tails because we're going to be removing that. Just kind of keep that yarn out of your way. And these first two blue ones from each side or each end, I'm just going to loosely kind of knot them together. Just like that. So that keeps those two stitches, those matching stitches, it keeps them lined up. I'm even going to double knot it. I'm not going to pull real tight, but I am going to double knot it. And now grab a darning needle. You don't want to use a sharp tip. You want to use a blunt tip needle like the ones that came in your package. I prefer a good old clover. So thread your tail, whichever tail is your longest or your most comfortable using. So the tail we're not using, we're also going to just kind of toss that behind. And we're just going to use work with the one yarn. But if we run out of yarn or we need an extra, we have two long tails we can use. That's why both of them are nice and long. And we are going to look for that very next stitch, that one loop, and we're going to pick up the loop from the other side. So the very first and last loop of our blue color or the yarn that we are keeping, just underneath those two loops. 
and then find the next one and at the top. So we're just going to match these up all the way along. We don't have to pull too tight, we just want them to be together and we're going to pull tight later. So all the way around you have to do this 48 times. So loop closest to you and the loop farthest away all the way around. Now when we get back to where we started, it's a little bit weird looking, but just keep going along, picking up your front loop and back loop, and then right before I go into those ones also. Just to be sure, can't hurt. So now we have a long tail and a short tail, and we can go ahead and just check that you have all your loops picked up, and when you're sure that you do, we can undo this working yarn. So the yarn that we started with, in the very beginning, it has this chain all along the top from that weaving row we did, front and back. So find your tail and get that to the one side. Now you can undo a lot of this at once. So way over on this other side, you can unfold it and you'll see that top string. You can just pull it. It comes out like, like a shoelace. You just pull it out and then flip it over and unroll the other end of it and pull it out. And one more time, just pulling it out like that. And now it's just going to unravel. So you can cake it up or you can just roll it into a quick little ball. So that one is finished. And now we can do the same to the other one, but that's just going to come out super, super easy. So now taking the short strand that we did all the way through, we just cinch it up. Pull, pull, pull. You don't want to break your yarn, but you want to pull it as much as you can. And now we're going to do a little double knot. Oops, that was my needle. One, and two. Now with my needle, I'm just going to sew this a little bit shut. So just through the fat part of those stitches, just under a little bit, not, not like all the way through because you might be on the inside of your hat and we want it to be reversible. So we're just going to go around those stitches that are sitting near the top. like that, all the way to the beginning, and give that a little pull, and that should cinch it up real nice. You could put a pom-pom if you feel like it, and now I'm going to knot those two yarns together again. One, and two. Thread them onto my needle one last time. And now back down into the center of my hat, grabbing it on the inside with my other hand and pulling it through. Now we're going to inside out the hat just to check how this side closed. Yeah, that closed fine for me. So now I'm just going to weave this tail in a little bit into a thick part, just underneath those top strands. We don't want it on the inside either. It's already been knotted. We just want to like put the tail somewhere. So through there, and we can cut our yarn. And there is your very first super sweet hat that worked out. So I hope you enjoyed that unboxing and tutorial as much as I did. I love that little knitting machine. Never really thought I was a loom knitter. <laughs> But it is really fun to do because it doesn't really matter. And like, how cute is that? So 50 grams, literally one hat. Isn't that great? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell beside that so you don't miss out on any more quick and easy tutorials just like this. Have a super great day. We'll see you in the next video and stay hooked.